In this video of the Missing Vintage Collection figures, we're going to be taking a look at the figures first released on the 1985 Power of the Force line. Hey there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video. So this is episode 4 of the Missing Vintage Collection figures and as I mentioned before we're going to be looking at the figures that debuted on the Power of the Force card backs which are more commonly known as the Last 17. As I mentioned in the previous episode it should actually be called the Last 15 as Lumat and Paplu actually debuted on the Return of the Jedi card at the back end of 1984. Those of you that were lucky enough to get yourself a barge will know that it came with an exclusive yak face on a Power of the Force card which included a collector's coin just like the original card backs back in the day. Now I love this style of card back and I'm in two minds whether I'd want Hasbro to use this card back again for the figures that I'm going to be talking about in this video. On one hand I would like them to respect the history and use it for the figures that we're going to be talking about but on the other hand I kind of like the idea that it only gets used for the ultra exclusive releases just like that yak face that we got in the barge. After all we've already had had some of the last 17 figures released in the vintage collection but on card backs that reflected the films that they were featured in. So General Lando is a great example, we already had him on the Return of Jedi card, so already the figures and card backs for that line of Power of the Force cards will be incomplete. Han Solo and Carbonite is another one that we recently got as part of the Jabba's Palace playset. So regardless of the card back we are still missing some awesome figures which were released on the Power of the Force card, some of which which haven't seen an update since the 90s. So before we take a look at the first figure, if you like this video, please like the video down below, hit that button, it really does help support the channel, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for future Star Wars Vintage Collection videos. I'll also leave some links in the description below to the previous episodes, so be sure to check them out. So with all that being said, let's get straight on to the first figure. First up we have Luke Skywalker in Stormtrooper Disguise. So this figure and car back combo is worth a small fortune these days and we are yet to see it in the vintage collection. We have had various attempts at it over the years with perhaps the Legacy Collection version being the most accurate. However there is a new version coming out as part of the Luke Skywalker 3 pack. So all they need to do is repack him on a single card and that gap will be filled very nicely indeed. And if it's anywhere near as good as the recent Han Solo Stormtrooper outfit figure that they released then we're in for one hell of a figure. Moving on to another Luke Skywalker and this time we have the Luke Skywalker in his Endor poncho or battle poncho. So this figure is well overdue an update in my opinion. We've had the Saga Collection version in 2006 and he also featured in the Battle of Endor Battle Pack in 2009 which by all accounts is the best version to date. It's got all the articulation you need, but obviously the face deco back then was nowhere near as good as today's standards. Next up we have a Mana Man. So this is the weird alien guy from Jabba's Palace that kind of looks like a cross between a salamander with a stick insect with a giant avocado. That's how I like to describe him anyway. He's, he's green and yellow, that's all you need to know. I'm pretty sure he's a bounty hunter and we haven't actually had an update of this figure since the 2001 Power of the Jedi line. Now by all accounts it is a decent version and probably wouldn't need much changing. In fact Only One Kenobi recently opened one up on his channel so do be sure to go and check that out for a better look. Moving on to the last remaining Ewoks from the vintage line and first up we have Romba. So I remember buying this figure as a kid and thinking that I had some sort of super rare Ewok that no one else had. Everyone of course had the classic ones like Wicket and Low Grey but Romba felt like he was super rare at the time. Anyway, we do need him on a Vintage Collection card and this one would be a pretty easy one to do as the version from the Legacy Collection 2 pack could quite easily be repacked onto that Vintage style card. The last remaining Ewok is Warrock and he was last seen in the same Battle of Endor 3 pack that featured the Luke Skywalker that we mentioned earlier. So this set actually looks really cool. Um, you even get the glider and boulder for your Ewok and I'd imagine that this set is pretty hard to get these days. I think it's one of those ones that doesn't really come up for sale very often so if you've got one you're a lucky man. Moving on to two figures that didn't have too much play value back in the day. First up we have the old Anakin Skywalker which is the Sebastian Shaw version. So this is the figure that's based on the Force Ghost version of Anakin Skywalker. So it's basically before the special editions of Return of the Jedi where they replaced the Force Ghost with the Hayden Christian version. And the card back certainly gets the award for the worst image ever used on a card back. It's like a bad painting with like a smoky effect. Why they couldn't get an image from the film I do not know. After all the film had been out for two years by then so it is very strange indeed. Anyway to complete the run we will need a version of this figure on a vintage style card. 
Maybe they could use the same image just for a laugh, I don't know. We do need an update of the figure, with the last update being in the Power of the Force 2 line all the way back in 1999. Another figure with zero play value, and I should know I had one as a kid, the Imperial Dignitary. Just stands there in the background as one of the Emperor's advisors. Pretty bad figure really, but funnily enough it's actually worth a fair bit these days. It's actually quite difficult to get one without the paint rub on his nose. And of course the most recent version of the Imperial Dignitary has a name, like they always do. He's called Janus Grijatus, I believe and was released as part of the Saga series back in 2003, so due an update for sure. Next up we have the A-Wing pilot, so this is one of those car backs that shows the vehicle rather than the character itself, they often did that back in the day in the vintage line, and since then we have had quite a few A-Wing pilots that are pretty decent figures. We had one in the Battle Above Endor 3-pack called Sela Cot. we also had one in the Pilots 3-pack called Jake Farrell, and we've also had one called Taicho Selchu, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who was released in the 30th anniversary line. Now I don't actually have any of these figures loose, so let me know in the comments if any of them are worthy of being in the vintage collection, or if we need a whole new sculpt. Now similar to the Droid 8D8, we haven't had an update for EV9D9 since the Power of the Force 2 line. Pretty decent figure I'm sure and would probably be okay so long as she was given a bit more articulation but to fill all the gaps we will need her on her own vintage style card. I actually love the design of this droid and it's actually quite a popular one with collectors these days. It's, it's worth a small fortune the original vintage one. The legs do have a habit of falling off so to get a mint one is actually quite difficult. But again, you know, come on Hasbro, let's fill that gap. We need EV99 on a vintage style card. Now I haven't actually included R2-D2 with the pop-up lightsaber in this list as we have had the version with the drinks tray, plus the Imperial Gunner is also being released in the next wave of figures, albeit on a Rogue One card. Han Solo Carbonite was released in the Jabba's Palace playset, we've already had Barada, and of course Yak Face was released at the start of the year in wave 4 and also that awesome exclusive version that came with the barge. So that's it for the Power of the Force figures and card backs. As I mentioned before, some of the last 17 figures have already been released in the Vintage Collection, but on car backs that match the films they featured in. I'm still not sure if I'd want Hasbro to release them on actual Power of the Force car backs. Perhaps they should just leave that to the exclusive Yak Face. Then again, I do love the car back style and I love the collector's coin. So if they went down that route, I wouldn't complain either. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be really interested to, to know whether you'd want that Power of the Force card back in the Vintage Collection, or if you'd just be happy for them to release them on, you know, the Return of the Jedi cards like they did with the General Lando. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and be sure to check out the next episode where I'll be looking at the creatures released in the Vintage line that are yet to be released in the Vintage Collection. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you on the next one.